Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Afterlife server and we are back down below in our villager trading hall that we saw a little bit of a peek of at the start of the last episode and I have all of my masons in place and I do have my zombification chamber right here with guy with a sword looking very dangerous <laughs> um, so I'm going to actually put in some farmers along here and that way it's going to be how we're going to get our emeralds to trade with these guys. I really wanted the quartz trades and things for these so I do need to do a little bit more trading with them but I don't have emeralds so that is our next plan of action. The only thing that's stopping me at the moment is <laughs> I don't actually have apples to make golden apples to heal up some villagers but we can actually go through the process and we can do one little guy here and we can see how that all works. So first of all we do need to come to our villager breeder and make sure we have some minecarts and then we grab one. Off he goes, he will go and fall in front of that zombie and get turned into a zombie himself. Then he should end up in his little cell over there for the tracks leading over and we do need to get ourselves a splash potion of weakness and a golden apple so we do splash him apple and then it is a waiting game for him to turn back into villager and he'll have cheaper trades we have our composters at the ready to turn him into a farmer so i'm gonna wait on that transform him into a farmer villager and get the second guy to use with this golden apple and then we actually need to work on a farm to get ourselves something to trade to make some emeralds off of these guys so there we go, both guys are now in and the first guy actually solved the problem I had. I didn't have apples so I traded with him to get some there and now we have all the golden apples right there that we need. Brewed up some more potions as well. So it's just going to have a bit of time, work our way through, get the villagers. Obviously I'm going to have the farmers on that side and the masons on that side. If there's other villagers that you think I should work on getting then let me know down in the comments as i'm not sure what else i will need other than these guys for quartz and things like that and obviously these guys just to get me the emeralds in the first place but i think before we work on the rest of the villagers it's time to get a farm up and running i'm going to build a melon and pumpkin farm to trade with the villagers and that's how i'm going to get my emeralds so let's go and do that And there is, and can you tell that it's a melon and pumpkin farm? Because I can't. <laughs> Let's take a look down here a bit closer. And it's just a standard design with the checkerboard pumpkins and melons. We have the pistons and observers to knock them off. And underneath, of course, we have our minecarts. These then drop down into some hoppers. And if we come down here underneath, we can see that we just have the items flowing into these droppers and they'll get spit out into a water column that then feeds into some chests over here and as you can see i've been collecting some already i've moved some over to the trading hall as we have actually got all of the villager traders in place to get our emeralds what oh well, that is a lot of zombies um <laughs> why is there so many let's see me let's see if we can get them to follow us over the edge of this Oh, they're coming, they're coming. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why there's so many zombies. That is odd. I didn't actually hit any. Usually you get a lot with the multi-spawning. <laughs> oh, they're not dying at the bottom, unfortunately. <laughs> Look at them all. <laughs> We're going to have to shoot them from here. Or maybe the sun will burn them in a minute when it comes to the day. That is a silly amount of zombies. Burn. Burn. There we go, we have 10 of our villagers here, the farmer villager, and they all trade for one pumpkin and one melon for an emerald. And I have been gathering up a little bit of a stockpile so far. This has just been from actually trying to get the 10 in here, 
and yeah looking good the last thing i do need to do is i'm probably going to create some storage here in this wall and hook it up to the actual farm itself over there have the items flow all the way over it's not actually too far and then just fill up these chests here so i can access all of the materials more easily from this location then i do need to build another storage area to actually store a lot of the trades i'll be doing a lot of the brick trades and things with these guys so maybe in the floor i do need to decorate out the room as you can see but i think what we're going to actually go and work on next is actually this area up here as this is going to be i have a design for like a windmill style house here and like i said before all this land out the front is going to be a wheat field but i think we're going to get the building up first and that way i can see how the village is going to look now that we have an area over there we have something over this side we have our kind of farming area over there i did want to keep that area clear but i thought it made sense just putting in some farms near the top and then having the slime farm down underneath i still need to dig out the rest of that hole right enough but for now let's jump into a time lapse and get ourselves building up this farmhouse windmill style build and i hope you enjoy Huh? What do you think? What do you think? I absolutely love it. I love how it turned out. Uh, this build, the concept of this build I've had for a little while, but I thought I would add on this little windmill here, or large windmill I should say, section, and yeah, I think it works perfectly for this area where this whole bit of land here is going to be obviously a wheat field that I've spoken about before, filling out this area, and I think it does look cool leading up to this build out there. So, I'm actually going to take a climb up high, and just see how much space we are talking about so it is quite a large area as it will run up to the back of these buildings here run along the tree line i may have to take some of those trees away so it kind of wraps around this kind of area here and then the pathway i think is going to come out through this tunnel come by the front entrance there and then loop around to where roughly where this cobblestone line is and wrap all the way around down to our main village section in there with all the houses and things and yeah i think it's cool so wintertooth is actually putting together some pathways to connect everyone's bases so that's what these little dots here are these stone ones you can see it goes all the way out there to a bridge and then down you can't really see it from here but down just about there there's going to be another bridge leading off to kyle's base and then i think there's also going to be a path i think that one there goes to spawn i believe and then there's going to be one that leads up to KB's base, which is just over there in the mountains. Um, so I think it was going to come up there, but maybe it'd be a good idea to lead through this little tunnel that we've created for this base. If a pathway led up that way and kind of went off to the left and then up to KB's base. So I might need to speak to Wintertooth about that and see if that's an idea to link these bases together. I think my area here is sort of in between the three. Kyle, KB and Spawn, so it's kind of centralised for everyone to pass through going to and from those areas. But yeah, I think I do love this build. There is no interior yet, as you can see, but I don't actually have any solid ideas of what I'm going to put in here. I think it's going to be mainly some kind of storage for things like wheat and other and all the crops and things like that. Obviously, we do have our Melligan pumpkins over there. 
But any crop things we could keep in this as a storage place. Maybe just have this central area here decorated out nice with some furniture and things like that. Maybe like a little cafe or something up the top of the stairs there. But I do love how it turns out. Let's go take a look at it from down here where the village is. And yeah, it looks pretty cool just off in the distance there. And there will be a lot of trees and things in this area. I do need to build up a lot of custom trees as it's looking a lot flat just now. But once the building's up, like I said, do a lot of custom trees just to get that nice and tight feeling in here. And yeah, there you can see the path there with a potential future bridge going across to that little island over there. But guys, unfortunately, I think that's going to have to do it for today's episode. And we did actually get a lot done, although not too much to record. We did get... But Melon and Pumpkin Farm built up. There was a lot of resources went into building that up, like the redstone and the main carts and all that kind of thing. And then we did build up this build, and this was four shulker boxes worth of materials, all sorts of things in here, like the bricks and things. I had to get my villager trading set up to get those. Obviously, all of the wood. I had to buy most of this stuff from the shopping district. All of the sandstone as well. So, yeah, it's been quite a grind to get all of the resources to build up the farms and this building here but hopefully next episode we can get the wheat fields done or at least started because I probably don't have enough seeds to fill this entire area it's going to take a, a long time to populate this entire section here with wheat and I do need to do a lot of terraforming there's a large chunk here of land missing so I need to fix that up and probably do an interior as from that as well and you guys let me know as well if you want me to do a little bit of a tour of the server just flying around get our bearings from where everyone's living there's a lot of bases and things that I've never actually been to I've just seen in people's videos uh, but now that winter tooth is connecting everyone's bases up with the paths it may be a good idea to get an idea from where everyone's living and how close they are how far away maybe we have to take the nether tunnels and things to some people's bases but let me know if you're interested in seeing that and we can do that in the next episode as well but i want to thank you very much for watching and i do hope that you enjoyed if you did leave a like and subscribe if you're not already that way you can catch all of my future episodes and with that guys until the next one bye bye